boy, I'm, I'm taking a long time, aren't I? So yes, we're driving down the jungle, and uh, I'm sitting on top of the truck, but since we're driving through the jungle, there's all these trees that would overgrow over the, the road. And at, at this point, the road was in a lot better shape. It was a lot drier and, I guess, better um, maintained. So the truck was going faster. There weren't those really huge divots in the earth like anymore. It was it was just kind of like driving down a bumpy dirt road, and then at one point just a normal dirt road. But um, so they're driving down the road, and maybe, but they're still not going so fast. Maybe 20 miles an hour. And I was sitting on the top, but because it's in the jungle, there's all this gro this like foliage growing over the top. So I'd have to look out, and whenever we were coming up on a tree, I'd have to run back and then hide behind the truck and let the trees go over and then I jump back on the roof again and I had to do that like every like minute like it was on a regular basis but it didn't really bother me because it was kind of exercise you know and it was cool to be out there but at one point I forgot and I was like oh shit it was too late so I had to like hold on to the strap and it just like <laughs> scratched me pretty good actually but uh yeah at one point I was looking forward and I saw this jaguar walk right in front of the truck just really mellow, not trying to run away from the truck or anything. I guess it knew, it knew, had seen those trucks a lot. It was pretty. Um, and uh, yeah, on the way down, I also saw that black guy again. On the way back, uh, just walking down the road, like miles away from there. So I guess he wasn't afraid of Jaguars. Although, they did have a lot of Jaguar sightings. I read in the newspaper when I was at that truck stock place that... Uh, some person, it was like in Georgetown or something, some person came home and they saw a jaguar in their front lawn, in their front porch sitting there. So he ran in, got his gun, and shot it. Because <laughs> um, I guess sometimes, I guess one of them attacked somebody and killed him or something like that. But uh, Yeah, so then we drive, and then we get to where it was paved road, and we drove down, and I bought this kid dinner again, and then we went into, oh, but and he, he had me stay at his brother's house. Well, I guess it was his, his his and his brother's house or something, but his brother and his wife, and I think they had like a baby or something. And I stayed there for like two nights, I think. And they gave me my own room, my own bed. It was pretty cool. But it was like totally dilapidated house, like just a couple of rooms and all the, you know, the boards, the floorboards were just like rotting and coming out. And... Um, and his, but it was weird because his brother was kind of acting like he wasn't happy to see him at all, and they weren't talking at all. The only person who said anything the whole time was the kid I was with, and he'd be like, "Oh yeah, great to see my brother, great to see my brother," and that's all he'd say. And but uh, the brother told me when I went out go, go around town to check it out, he'd be like, "Yeah, well," and I think I even hung out at the house by myself, and he's like, "Yeah, don't let anybody in the house." <laughs> <laughs> so, that was weird. But, uh, yeah, Georgetown is definitely, probably, it's definitely, Georgetown was the seediest, poorest, most dangerous looking capital city I've ever been to. <clears throat> um, there were a lot, Georgetown was part of the English Empire, and they had all these, in the center part, they have all these, uh, I guess, a couple of English churches. English buildings and actually English style houses <clears throat> that they were built a long time ago and all the houses in Georgetown were just dilapidated haven't been painted for 50 years the wood was rotted and and just <clears throat> warped and um, there were churches everywhere like every block had a church um, oh yeah and of course my buddy he couldn't pay me when we got there of course his brother didn't have any money I don't I think he said something about how he had money in some other place and he'd be able to pay me then, but... Um, yeah, so I walked around Georgetown. Um, I saw him playing cricket. All these people playing cricket in the field. And I walked through one neighborhood and some guy was like... looked like he was about to run out and like try and mug me. He was like really angry. <laughs> But it was weird because there was the, they also seemed kind of happy too. When I first got out got out of the bus and we took these little buses, these little uh, mini buses, 
It was like the taxis they have or the buses or these minivans where people would all jump in. All the minivans would, there'd be like, they'd all had a different theme to them. They all looked different. They'd, they'd be playing this rap music, like American rap music. And they'd have like disco balls inside and shining light. And they'd all be painted and they all had a different name. Like Ja Rasta would be one. And then, um, that was kind of cool. But uh, I think I was there one or two days. And then I went and I got I got the visa for uh, Suriname. I think I had to do that before I even went there. And then took a bus across Suriname. And we had to take a ferry across the river. They didn't have a bridge for it yet. And then drove some more and then got to the, um, the edge of the country where we had to take another ferry across the river to get into Suriname. And then when we got off the boat there, we uh, got on a, uh, I, you pay like a taxi, like a minivan to take you across some dirt road and then he lets you off and then I paid another guy in a, just a normal car. It was his job to drive us like a few hours into the capital city and so I sat in the front seat and it was cool. Luxurious compared to the traveling I've been doing since then, sitting in the front of a car. But uh, I got to Suriname, got a hotel room there, and the, the capital of Suriname, what's it called, Surabaya, or is that Indonesia? Um, was another very poor, dangerous looking place, um, but it, not quite as bad as Georgetown, or not quite as crowded, but the people were a lot more grumpy. They had this, uh, now Suriname used to be owned by the Dutch, and now it's its own country. Uh, so there was this big, there were lots of old Dutch style buildings there and there was a big, uh, uh, what do you call it, <laughs> wooden church and I read in the book that it was the highest, the tallest wooden church in the world. Um, it was really big, it was yellow, it was really pretty, but you could tell it was really old and hadn't been painted for 50 years and was about to fall down. And then they had another church with a mosque right next to it and um, they had a cool central plaza area next to like uh, the old administrative building I don't know maybe that's what it was like now too and then one road lining like a bay that went in because it was on the edge of the water um, I was going to with all of these Dutch style buildings wooden tall wooden kind of Victorian looking buildings that were about to fall down I was going to get some money and go into Guyana, French Guyana, or Guyana, whatever it's called, but I couldn't get any money out of the bank. They wouldn't accept a visa. So this is the second country that's happened to me. It happened to me in Tibet, not happened to me here, and I didn't have any much cash at all. So I had to um, just go back to Guyana, but I didn't. Ha I barely had enough money to get a um, to get a. Uh, the bus ride back in the early in the morning it was like four in the morning you leave and in order to eat I had to walk down like a mile down to some like I guess swankier hotel place and, and eat but in order to to be able to buy something with my visa at that place I had to buy like 20 bucks worth of food or something or <laughs> maybe it was more I don't remember so I went there and then and the next morning got a bus ride back and um Oh, but I was hanging out with this American guy actually outside in a cafe near a uh, kind of a cool little plaza area for a while. He was living in Guyana because his best friend lived there and he went to go look at some flowers and the, the waitress ran out and was totally freaking out like, oh no, he's not going to pay, he just walked off and I was like, what are you talking about? He's American. He's a tourist. Tourists don't do that kind of thing. He's like, no, it happened to me just last week. Some tourists walked off and they didn't pay and I had to pay. But uh, anyway, he came back and... <laughs> but uh, there was a McDonald's there too that I ate at. That was cool. But uh, yeah, there were lots of people scowling at me there. I was didn't feel that safe. So I left the next morning um, and the guy, they don't speak English there, they speak Dutch, and maybe the guy didn't understand me or whatever, but I thought, tried to make it clear that if the bus, the car he would take me was all the way to the river, but it was only halfway, so I had to pay again to get another car all the way to the river. So now I didn't have 
enough money to get all the way to Georgetown. But I remembered that <clears throat> the hotel that I stayed in, because I stayed in in a hotel and hung out at some town before. It was like the last town before you get to Suriname. Um, I remembered that I forgot to get my deposit back from them. So when we're driving down the road in this minivan packed with people, and I tell the bus driver, I'm like, dude, I don't have the money to 